So we're here in uh, Machine Halle Zweckel, and uh, this is the space that we're going to be performing this piece, uh, The Last Adventures, uh, in when it's, uh, when it's finished. But right now we're in the middle of a kind of um, exploratory uh, week of work uh, inside this space. Um, and I guess uh, how we're approaching the project is to while we're in Sheffield, uh, we're gathering the performers together and we're working in a studio and we're improvising, we're starting to make ideas about costume and about scenery and all of these things uh, and about text. And we're trying stuff uh, at home. And uh, I think of that as a process of trying to build up a kind of vocabulary, a set of material that we can bring here into the space now and later on during the process to bring material here into this space so that we can figure out what works in here and um, what kinds of things we can bring to uh, the work with Tarek Atui, who's the collaborator um, on this project. When Tim contacted me for uh, for this piece, the idea was really to uh, work in the sense of a collaboration. As somebody who comes from performance, uh, the interesting thing was in like merging these two performative worlds together and see how they communicate. So in no uh, case we are working uh, like on sound for a theater piece, but more like on finding modes of. Uh, uh, perf uh, of performances coexisting together and multiple modes of existing of existence of sound within this piece. So it's not music for theater, it's not music as such. Uh, the space here also offers a huge uh, potential in terms of uh, working on sound in space and working from very specific sonic situations that echo, complement or uh, contrast with uh, what uh, the performers and the theatricality of the piece is uh, uh, already uh, giving up. Uh, so for now we are in the process of like really uh, finding this equilibrium and seeing like uh, how a multitude of meanings can emerge out of uh, my work on performance and sound and uh, Tim and Forest Entertainment's approach and the work we, uh, we all know. We started the project with an idea about telling um, or referring to the idea of a, a kind of fantastic epic story. But I think I have an ambiguous relationship to stories. <laughs> um, I like the idea of them, but then actually stories don't interest me so much. So um, where we are right now is we seem to have the scenery for um, a fantastic epic story, uh, a kind of fantastical forest. Um, a wild stormy sea and uh, clouds from the sky, but uh, the story's vanished. So we're, we're dealing a lot with these kind of scenic elements that suggest narrative, um, which suggest location. Um, and we're kind of juggling with these uh, scenery parts. Um, and we've also started to work with uh, the text in the piece in two ways. Firstly, as um, a kind of distorted uh, gibberish or nonsensical um, monologue texts um, which are produced by the performers but then they're further distorted and changed by uh, Tarek and by various electronic uh, means which means that the voice and story turns more into, into sound or into music. I guess in both of those cases, what, what's sort of holding that together is this idea of um, language as a, as a kind of question, as a, as a problem, if you like. Um, we have language as nonsense or as something that's turning into nonsense. And we have language where people are trying to grab hold of the meaning, trying to learn the meaning of particular 
phrases, trying to grab hold of them to, to communally learn them. So in neither of those cases is language uh, an easy thing. It's, it's a troubling, uh, kind of anxious place. And that, in a way, that suits, that suits very much the landscape of this piece because um, it seems to have something of the sort of magical and the unsettling uh, that you might find in one of these epic or you know, folkloric stories that we, we started from. Um, it has this unsettling quality and that, that's quite key to the piece, I think. I, I think, uh, you know, part of my work, part of my work with, with Forced Entertainment has been to, uh, I guess, to ask questions about what theatre might be and what performance might be and to try to push, to try to push theatre and performance in different directions. And um, I think one way that, that we've done that is by putting less and less theatre into theatre. So there's this idea of shrinking theatre to the point where maybe it's just a text or just something very, very intimate. Um, and then another way, of course, of challenging theatre is to put too much theatre in theatre. So um, then you end up with these very excessive physical routines or with lots and lots of noise and uh, running and, and, and chaos, if you like. And um, I think both of those attract me, both of those interest me. And I think in a piece like this one, uh, what, what, what I'm doing, what we're doing together in the work is trying to find this conversation between um, the very intimate, the very uh, fragile, very present kind of contact with the performers and, and, uh, and text maybe. And on the other hand, to find this very exuberant, very chaotic, uh, more spectacular uh, sort of performance language. Although of course, you know, I think certainly this idea of the spectacular is something that we, we make a joke out of also. The, the scenery is very, very homemade and there's an element of sort of comical uh, chaos in, in the way that we're trying to use these things. It's not a, a huge operatic machine. I mean, we, we maybe make a joke on this uh, spectacle, if you like.